So how did I get from opening Maya for the first time and feeling like I'm in a goddamn spaceship to modeling and animating weapons for our game? Shit. Let's get this debriefing underway and find out, shall we? So back in the start of 2020, before a single line of code was written for Born to Build, me and Heyman started creating assets for the game. I decided to record his workflow so I could study it in my own time, which were then turned into the time-lapse videos that you can find right now on our channel. Heyman modeled the following. The Grunt, our first ever 3D asset, the M16A1, M1 Garand and the Remington 870. All while I was carefully watching his every move and asking questions about modeling and animation. Working together on figuring out the rules for our style made things very interesting for me. Each completed weapon model that you see had about one or two models that were completely scrapped, especially in the beginning, because we knew from the get-go that we didn't want the extremely blocky look of Ace of Spades or Minecraft, especially when it comes to the hands. So a lot of effort went into figuring out how the Grunt's hands will actually look, because if you think about it, his hands is what you'll see most of the time when you play the game. So we had to make sure that you can animate it in different positions to allow for more complicated reload animations while still retaining that blocky look. So once we figured out the grunt, we decided to move on to weapons. So we set out to model them in a way that can really look like their real life counterparts while still being embedded in our low poly style. To do this, we use a side picture of the weapon to get its basic outline and shape. While doing so, we avoid using any circles during the modeling process, relying mostly on just different shapes of squares, or sometimes, you know, we cheat a bit where we can, but we try to keep it as square as possible. We don't really have a rule book for our style, like do's and don'ts, it mostly comes down to feeling and adjusting the model accordingly. See, we wanted to try and retain the identity of the weapon, but still have them appear as part of a cohesive style, which is something I think that at least for me, I'm still struggling with. A good example for this is how Heyman turned the grip of the M16A1 to just an elongated square and turned it on its side. Because our style is not exactly low poly, it's more like super square lowerer poly, if that makes sense, I think. Each weapon presents a different challenge, but some, like the double-barreled shotgun, were much easier. Just turn the barrels into squares and boom! Done, baby. Game's ready. Ship it. After watching Heyman for a while, I decided to tackle modeling myself, and I started with a double barrel shotgun. So after I finish a model, I send it to Heyman through our server, so he can start rigging it. He usually streams the process to me because I have some specifications and recommendations, since I'm the one who has to animate everything in Born to Build, because I don't know if you've noticed, I have a little obsession when it comes to reload animations. <laughs> and also because sometimes different weapons just require different rigs. While some are simpler than others, some rigs can become much more complex and require special attention, like the M60. Once Heyman finishes the rig, he sends it back to me, and that's when I start animating it. The first thing I ever animated in 3D space was the M16A1, which was a huge pain to learn, and even a bigger pain to show you these early attempts of animation, but in retrospect, I'm very happy that I recorded these, as I can now measure how much I improved from my first animation attempt to my latest ones. I only animated in 2D before, but to be quite frank, I never learned how to animate professionally. I was always just obsessed with animation, in in general and wanted to try it out for myself. Since I can't draw for shit, as seen in my beautiful grunt concept art, 3D is a good entry point for me. While I'm still not 100% satisfied with the final version of the M16A1, I had to move forward to other weapons in the arsenal, and I can always go back and make changes, even after the weapon is implemented in the engine. Most weapons share the same animation types, which we catalog in a JSON file alongside their keyframe range. So we got idle, Idle B, Fire, Reload, Reload Empty, and so on. For the M16A1, I had to do all of these five times because I just wasn't happy with the results. And I'm known to learn things by just attempting them over and over again until I just get it. So after I finished the M16A1, I moved to the M1 Garand, and the Remington 870. So with three weapon animations under my belt, I decided that I felt comfortable enough to start dabbling in modeling the other weapons that we're planning to add in the future. I should also mention that I wanted to let Heyman work on other things like the engine and the map editor alongside Emil, so you know, when you have a small team, three devs, it's really important to help each other 
whenever possible. All the first models I did went directly to the bin because there were some, you know, I was creating M-Gons and I was making some basic modeling mistakes and it took me a good while until I got my bearings on just the correct modeling process. So starting with the Colt 1911, then I moved to the Tokarev, double barrel shotgun, the SKS, the AK-47, the Thompson, grease gun, the PPS, MAT-49, and finally the M60, which I did put off for a while because it's such an iconic weapon and I knew that I needed more practice before I could tackle this monster. I just finished him on the last week of 2021 and I'm pretty happy with the result, if I do say so myself, so please let me know in the comments what you think. Once the animations are complete, we start to test things in the engine. They're still in the implementation process of how we actually get the weapons to work in the game code, which I won't be able to cover just yet because it involves a custom export system from Maya and a custom import system for our engine. We're doing this because we want our assets to be easily updated in future builds without much hassle, like fixing animation or model issues or adding and updating sounds. And that's pretty much it. Research, reference image, modeling, more research, rigging, then back to animation, and finally, sound design and implementation. Hopefully, I'll be able to show you one of these weapons working inside the game engine soon. We're making some good progress. Our editor's UI is shaping up nicely. We're already rendering some voxels and have some very basic first-person camera movement. All of these are just huge milestones for a custom engine. So if you're an indie developer, just please listen to me when I tell you not to automatically say no to something just because you don't know how to do it yet. You might surprise yourself with what you can learn if you just decide to sit on your ass and actually put the work in to try and learn something. I never touched any 3D software in my life before we started working on this game and I feel that I made some very solid progress and I still want to improve a lot. I'd like to thank these channels for providing me with hours of animation references. If you like reload animations like I do, please check them out. Also, tell me what you think about this less fancy format for our development bunker videos. Having mostly audio and footage without this guy animating all the time helps me cut down on editing time significantly. But I'll make sure to keep him around because, you know, he's the grunt. You know, come to think of it, that might actually be an interesting subject for the next devlog, just talking about what went into designing him. You might think that having a simple model made things easier for us, but try and remember, we're not professional 3D modelers or animators, so a lot more thought went into these things than one might think. Till next time, soldiers, keep your heads down and stay out of trouble. Over and out.